Starting at a very young age, I was transfixed by punks. I remember peering at them in fascination, clad in their all-black clothing, covered in spikes and studs with neon-colored hair, defying gravity. When I was a child, my mother once pointed out a woman crossing the street in downtown. She meant for me to be shocked, but instead I was entranced. Her neon green hair was radiant in the sunlight, her thick-soled boots were strutting confidently, and her all-black clothing made her stand out in the crowd of perky San Diegans on the street. I grew up with that visual stuck in my mind, wanting to emulate the confidence I saw so apparently with that woman. Starting in fifth grade, I began to fall in love with rock and punk. I listened to classics such as Anarchy in the UK and was enamored by The Clash. My mom's combat rock vinyl would become an object of fascination where I'd study how elegantly careless they looked on the cover. I would download music on LimeWire that would subsequently crash my PC but make my heart sing. <laughs> my tastes were getting more punk, but I still looked like a total nerd who shopped at Old Navy. <laughs> By the time I was in high school, I had begun to change. I was learning how to talk to people, how to show off my vast music knowledge of underground scenes while passing my AP English classes. I had the temptation to shave my head, but was still on my Mexican folkloric dancing team, so I couldn't. <laughs> I began to leave the radio and listen to the blaring horns of ska music from No Doubt or the politically charged ramblings from Choking Victim and Crass. My punk leanings were getting stronger. When I was a senior in high school, I started to go to shows. Situated in a large shed in a stranger's backyard, dozens of punks in their patched and studded regalia would congregate and listen to hardcore bands who screamed until their throats ran raw and their instruments would be covered in sweat. Circle pits would bloom open in the crowd and flailing limbs would be thrown in every direction. It was there I noticed him. I was a hopeless romantic who would develop a mad crush on any boy deemed the slightest bit worthy. He was my height, but older than me by four years. He would always be in the pit at shows, and to my young punk self, that made him instantly hotter. He exclusively wore thick-soled creeper shoes and had tattoos sprinkled on his left forearm that looked as if though they were melting. He had a red hot chili peppers tattoo. That probably should have been a sign, but I continued anyway. <laughs> I eventually got his attention. We would talk before the music began playing, and I would dreamily watch him barrel through the crowd to fling and contort his body to the music. I needed to impress him. I had no clue how, because I was a good kid. I didn't drink or do drugs. I obeyed curfew, and my hobby was doing Bella Focorico. <laughs> okay. I was freshly 18, and although technically a young adult, I had no power in my very traditional Latino home. What I needed was a tattoo. <laughs> I knew what I wanted. I didn't know where to get it. Weeks later, as I was eating food at Denny's with my newer punk friends and brother, the conversation of tattoos came up. One friend showed us how she used to have a weed leaf tattooed on her inner lip, but it faded after several months and completely disappeared in a year. It struck me like a bolt of lightning. I would get a lip tattoo. <laughs> Thankfully, my new friend Luis was brand new to tattooing and more than capable of scribbling something on my lip. <laughs> my friends all wanted in. Even my brother wanted to get one. I was so excited. The day came and my brother and I sat outside of Luis's home. For an hour, we agonized over what tattoos to get. We talked about how it must remain a secret from our parents. My brother would surely be kicked out of the house if they found out, and I didn't dare to wonder what would happen to me. Tattooing meow onto our lips would be stupid, we agreed. <laughs> Thug life was too cool for us. And then finally, we figured it out. Bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
shit, this hurts, I thought to myself. I wasn't about to admit that I was in anguish. One minute later, with my skin still vibrating in pain, I rushed over to the mirror and looked at my new ink. It was written there in its raw, bloody glory, Bamf. It stood for bad ass mother fucker smiley face. I would surely become one after this. I had to. <laughs> I had to impress my punk crush. We were ecstatic. We drove home on cloud nine. We practiced drinking out of cups and water bottles so that we would not expose our tattoos. Behind my father's back, I would smile and flash my lip at my brother while he did that same to me. <laughs> With my pulsing mouth barely intact, I drove to the show that was taking place that night. I walked up to my crush, and after some flirty bantered, I showed him my tattoo. Oh, that sucks you'd write a curse word on yourself, he said. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me, he was a very devout, born-again Christian <laughs> who did not swear, drink, or smoke. I was crushed. I wanted a boyfriend, but the plan failed miserably. Instead, I focused on showing everyone at school my new tattoo, I would proudly flash it to anyone willing to glance at it. I didn't get the guy, but at least I could get some no notoriety amongst my normie peers of being a punk. The end of the school year approached, and I was getting ready for graduation festivities and prom. I went to grad night on a Thursday night with friends high on ecstasy. We laughed and ran around Disneyland, teasing one another and causing a ruckus. I came back at 9 a.m. and crashed onto my bed where I slept for hours. The next day was prom, and I wanted to get in as much beauty sleep as possible. I woke up feeling sick and with a blinding headache. I went downstairs to my mother, who was cooking in the kitchen with my brother watching. I talked about how tired I was and how I was looking forward to prom on the next night. She listened and then asked me to chop carrots for a soup she was making. While complaining about my headache and my hands dirty from cutting the food, she offered to give me ibuprofen. She gingerly moved to place the pill in my mouth, and with a staggering lack of self-awareness, I opened my mouth in anticipation of receiving the incoming ibuprofen, and she saw a flash of black ink in my pink mouth. <laughs> Ay, Victoria, ¿qué es esto? <laughs> my stomach sank to my feet. I looked away and fervently chopped the vegetables with more enthusiasm and passion than a plant should ever deserve. <laughs> what were you saying, Mom? Huh? What was it? What is that on your lip? I deflected her questions as best as I could, which apparently was not very good at all. I could feel the sweat start to appear on my brow as I tried to shake off my mother's attention, but her eyes were glued to me like a dog chasing a cat. My hands were shaking. As I was trying to think of a phrase that was less offensive to say, I heard footsteps retreat, run upstairs, and shut the door. My brother was safe from seeing me get murdered. She didn't notice. She was fixated on me. What does it mean? Oh, mom, it's nothing. It's nothing. Tell me. That's when I realized that there was no going back. I always wanted to be a punk, to be a badass, to not give a fuck. So here was my chance. I looked her in the face. Her eyes were the size of saucers, and her nostrils were flaring. <laughs> I took a deep breath and said, bad ass mother fucker smiley face. <laughs> I, we raised you in a Christian home, Victoria. <laughs> Seeing my chance to escape, I quickly walked out of the kitchen. I knew I was dead. I ran upstairs into my room and laid on my bed, texting friends what happened and how I was freaking out. My mother slammed the front door shut and left with my brother to go to the store. I knew I was in trouble, but it was going to be nothing compared to when my father got home. <laughs> Hours later, he arrived. I showered to avoid the inevitable. After sitting in my room for nearly half an hour, he casually called my name. I went downstairs to see him sitting on his spot on the couch. 
I sat as far as possible away from him. Come here. Come on. Scoot a little closer. He nearly cooed. <laughs> Holy shit, I am dead, I thought. <laughs> I moved over inch by inch until I was sitting directly next to him. He pulled my bottom lip and took a look at the wretched scrawling. He asked if getting the tattoo hurt. Uh, yeah, a lot. Well, it's going to hurt a hell of a lot more to get it off. He then outlined that I was going to see a specialist who would laser the tattoo off because I would not have that filth on my body. I was shocked. It'll only last six months, I pleaded. They fade and disappear. They weren't buying it. During this devastating talk, my dutiful and brave brother was cowering in his room, afraid to be forced to pull down his lip and show our parents that I wasn't the only stupid kid. <laughs> but still, I would not tell on him. I was a good sister. I was the vault for our secrets, and he was my beloved older brother. I would be devastated if he was kicked out of the house because we had been close our entire lives. I was on the verge of tears before I was waved away by my father. I was terrified to get my mouth lasered and the crooked writing burnt out of my mouth, no way in hell that would hurt any less than the initial tattoo. Fortunately, my ass was saved by the fact that I was already 18 and they couldn't legally force me to get the tattoo removed. So I was safe in that aspect. However, my plans were about to be abruptly changed. The following morning, I was laying in bed, daydreaming about my prom night, my green leopard print prom dress hung in the closet, my patent stilettos sat at attention, waiting to be walked in. I was thrilled that they found my tattoo and I was free, or so I thought. Two quick knocks on my door and my father swung it open. He stuck in his head and a near blur said, you're not going to prom, then slammed the door shut. For a moment, I was stunned into silence before I let out a wail that would make dogs howl in unison across the neighborhood. <laughs> my prom, my one magical night was now ruined. My dress peeked at me from the closet, mocking me in all of its green glory. After two hours of tearful phone calls to friends, I laid there, dejected, pissed, and defeated. The punk thing to do would be to zip up that dress, strap on my heels, and casually flip the bird to my parents as I strutted out to my car that they happened to pay for. But truthfully, despite the leopard print on my denim vest, the crafts I had playing on my iPod, and the hardcore band shirt that I proudly wore to everything, I was still just a nerd. Not a punk poser, but someone who was still mostly a square. So instead, I licked my wounds a little longer and called a friend and watched a movie that night with my parents. For my brother, however, he waited in agonizing terror for the moment I would give him up to my parents. I never did. It wasn't until a year later when he was moving out of the house that he showed my mother his ridiculous tattoo. I was told she gasped in horror. That same night, I walked past my parents' bedroom and suddenly heard, you're a really good sister, called out to me. I stopped for a moment and asked why. My mother said, your brother showed me his tattoo. Gah? My father nearly yelled as he spun to look at my mother. Your son has the same damn tattoo. She didn't tell on him this entire time. I walked away as I heard my mother explaining to my father what happened. I looked in the mirror in my bedroom at the tattoo. It was as fresh as the day as I got it buzzed onto my lip. Having someone who has tattooed less than a month to scrawl Banff was a bad idea. In his novice ways, he pushed too hard while tattooing and went past the membrane of my mouth and far deeper into the skin than what was recommended. So I'll have this tattoo for the rest of my life. A constant reminder of being 18 and foolish with my brother and friends, of trying to impress myself and the crush I had on an older man. I was a bit of a square and still am. However, getting inked and not telling on my brother was pretty punk in itself, because it was hardcore to get grilled by the man and still not give up my secret. I may not have gone to prom, but at least I'm not a snitch. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, I am a badass motherfucker. <laughs>